Hello. Welcome to Tom's Painting Show. I'm Tom. Glad you can come along with me on this journey. Now, before we discuss the meat of the project, which is right here, discuss if you learn anything, would like to know more about anything, just like and subscribe, put a comment down and below. You know how the algorithm works by now, so we appreciate it here if you took care, could take care of that. Awesome. Now let's get to it. All right, so we are at Grace Dew Priory. Uh, some of the footage is corrupted, so I have to make do with what I could salvage. So here it is, and I have time lapse along, help speed along because no one really paints that fast. Uh, from the parking lot to the area where I was going to paint was about a one mile walk or two kilometers, roughly, uh, depending on where you're at and how you measure things is going to be, you know, how you go about getting there, uh, carrying all my kit on that I need for the day. And it was about 80 degrees out, which is 26 degrees Celsius. Not much of a breeze, but just sun, hot, blazing sun. Helps the paint flow smoothly, which was awesome because oil-based paints are uh, notoriously finicky due to temperature. And the, the easier the flow, the better. Uh, luckily for me, I also remembered to bring a water bottle because I was not used to the sun out in the middle of the day like that. And as I progress through the painting, I'm going to stick to three guidelines. Not really hard, fast rules, just guidelines. You may have heard these from various other painters as well, and they, they stick really well, tried and true. All right? uh, you're going to want to work from big to small. You're also going to go from thin to thick, and then dark to light. And I'll go over each of these in detail as we get to them throughout this episode and further on in the journey. All right. Now, if you noticed in the intro, I knocked out a lot of preparation work. All right, and that's the key to success for this endeavor. Uh, I time up some key elements of bits I would need. Uh, in the first section, there's jars, uh, scrubbing pads, white spirits, mineral spirits, what have you. Uh, they're, they clean my brushes as I go. The second jar is linseed oil. It's a medium for the paint. Helps it thin out. Um, I also use some polyurethane on my palette to protect it, keep it from warping and dying out, drying up, and uh, keeping the colors to what I would expect them to without any cross-contamination. Uh, it just helps it last longer in case conditions on site get extreme. And I have to anticipate that maybe things aren't in my favor in this journey. I also bring along paints I'm going to use in my palette, uh, some pencils and brushes, and my sketchbook. Uh, I only use filberts, and mostly everything I do is either in a size 6 or a size 2. I have other brushes, but just for this, it's the most, it's the most comfortable I'm with. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about including a couple smaller brushes in the future, but right now, it's not that time. As I'm painting out in public, I get approached often. Everyone's so nice, comforting, very complimentary. I find that I find that just mind-boggling sometimes. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience so far. A lot of compliments. And people go out of their way to even talk to you. It's, it's encouraging. Um, I, I, I anticipated and expected much worse dialogue between people, but the demons in your own head are not uh, the demons you'll meet in real life, and uh, you know, and, it, and it's 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 been wonderful so far. I, and I've noticed that after after the pandemic, a lot of people are more nicer to others that are going out of the way to do something to create something because we just had this big, huge uh, removal of creativity. <clears throat> All right. Now, first thing I do is I start off with my sketchbook, pull out my pencils, and I try to draw the composition of what I want so at least I know what it looks like two-dimensionally. Three-dimensional, it shows you the depth of everything in place, but you got to know where your placement is uh, two-dimensionally so that way it can go on your canvas. And drawing, when if you can draw it in pencil, you can draw it in paint. Uh, and that's the biggest clue of what you're going to need, is making sure you know how to draw. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not drawing 
detail. You're drawing shapes. And then you're going to paint shapes. You're not painting leaves. You're not even painting trees. You're painting the shape of something. And then you're going to mix the paints so that they're close to the tone and color value that you can see. Uh, all right, and uh, this allows me to, and this allows me and you, when you try this yourself, to focus on sizing and placement, scale, proportion, uh, and and you do this with thin paint, a lot of linseed oil, little bit of burnt sienna paint. It goes on. It, it, the thicker stuff will go on, and you layer that stuff on. But if the, the more layers you have of thin, really thin, almost watery to somewhat thin, a little bit thicker, and then you're just globbing it on at the end. It, it helps give you certain layers where you can build up and build up. Uh, oil paint, for the most part, is really pushing and mushing around of puzzle pieces to get the shapes you want and where you're after. And, uh, and uh, that's kind of how you got to treat it, you know. More importantly, you want to go from dark to light. I start with a gray canvas, puts you right in the middle, the tonal spectrum, and then, and then you pull it down with burnt umber. You immediately have your darks down. You start filling in your shadows, and this is the key to help give your picture the shape. But you know where your composition is once you have the darkness on the gray, because you then have two colors. You have two tones knocked out right there. You've got your darks and your mids. Now, no one wants to see a gray world. No one's walking around in the fog. It's just not, not a thing. So you've got to add color to those certain spots in those spaces. And then you're going to add your highlights. And those are your brighter colors. And you're going to go up. You're, you're going to shift tonally. And it's, it's going to come together. All right. And as you can see in these shots, I have people moving in and out of the area of your painting. If you don't want to include them, just don't. Just focus on different spots of the painting until they clear, and then you can work on that area. It's fine. It, it works really well. Uh, knock this painting out in a couple hours. The sun was pretty much in the same azimuth of the sky. It stayed above to the right most of it from my point of view from my direction uh, it kept the dark spots the dark sides of the stone walls dark it kept the light sides the highlighted sides of the stones of the ruins light and it created that contrast to help pick out where what's darker what's brighter and when you paint those shapes it gives you a better sense of placement and and what those shapes really come out to um, now for the test and well there you have it the ruins of grace Dew prairie and all its splendor uh, thank you for coming on the journey if you haven't yet please like and subscribe uh, share let your friends know and uh, and tune in next time where I go to bath. And yes, it'll be a water painting. Have a good day. Happy painting. Bye.